Hello family, welcome to Kingdom Matters with Apostle Gideon. If you are new on this channel, kindly consider subscribing as well as turning on the bell for notification. We upload weekly videos aimed at helping you grow in the Lord as well as answer difficult questions that is making rounds in Christian circles. Our topic for today is should Christians practice astrology or should Christians know their horoscope in order to guide them in this life? If you watch Christian channels in Ghana, you probably have seen a pastor championing a course to lead the people of God in the area of astrology as well as palm reading and many other things. He calls it biblical astrology. So watch this. In this matter of astrology, yes. the moment hmm. we have deception mm. Mm. creeping in to cloud our minds not to have anything to do with the stars mm. it is an ambition of the enemy by which he has succeeded in pushing the church down and stopping the church to arise so there are most people, they seem to say that, no, you see, God gave us the Bible. That, that is sheer ignorance. God gave us the Bible. God has given us the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is enough. You are listening to a people who want to keep you down. Now the question is this. If Holy Spirit is enough, what of the Father and what of Jesus? Holy Spirit cannot be enough. Holy Spirit is there to teach you. So what exactly would he teach you? He's there to instruct you. He's there to have a material to open your heart to. He's not the only thing you're supposed to have. He's not the only being you're supposed to work with. You're supposed to know Jesus. Yes. You're supposed to know the Father. Yes. You're supposed to know Holy Spirit. Yes. You're supposed to know the scriptures. Yes. You are supposed to know the brethren. Yes. You are supposed to know the stars. Yes. Everything is all inclusive. Let us not take one and leave the other. I mean, there must be Today the whole we want concept. to ask and answer the question, should Christians read their horoscopes or believe in astrology? This wasn't supposed to be a thing we would have been addressing now because you don't see it linked to the people of God in any way throughout the Bible. But in the last days, the Bible says in... 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Verse 2 says, Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now listen to this in the Message Bible. It says, the same 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 2, it says, The Spirit makes it clear that as time goes on, some are going to give up on the faith and chase after demonic illusions put forth by professional liars. These liars have lied so well and for so long that they've lost their capacity for truth. Going through the Bible, it is nowhere the least suggested that the people of God should practice any form of astrology. So naming it biblical astrology doesn't validate it. Just as saying biblical witchcraft does not make that witchcraft acceptable in Christianity. Quickly, let me take you into the matter to show you why this is a no-no and the beginning of a great deception, if not quickly diagnosed and uprooted. The first problem I find from scripture with this group trying to learn astrology and apply it to themselves is that neither Jesus nor the early apostles practiced this kind of thing they are doing, astrology or the reading of the horoscope. Don't be fooled by the array of verses they are using. The Bible can be used to teach anything when you take it out of context. The fact that you see a thing mentioned in the Bible doesn't mean a validation. Witchcraft, necromancy, suicide, gambling, incest, these are all mentioned in the Bible, but that doesn't mean it is being approved by God. The question to ask is this, what has God said about them? The people of God 
I never thought to use the stars and moon for direction and guidance in their lives. Never. So if you see stars in the Bible, you can apply it to many things. But the people of God are never told. Sadly, this practice is being propagated on TV in Ghana. The first thing to note is that people who divine by the elements of the stars and the universe, aka astrologers, existed way back in Bible days. And you can see them many times in the Bible. When King Nebuchadnezzar captured Judah and led them into captivity in Babylon, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys were chosen to stand before the king together with Babylonian astrologers. When you read Daniel chapter 1 verse 18 to 20, look at what he says. He says, Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the Enoch brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Look at verse 19. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. Did you see that? We see three groups of wise people in this account. The people of God who have the Holy Ghost, magicians and astrologers. But the interesting truth is that the people of God who truly are dedicated to God always outshine the magicians and astrologers every time they were given a task to deliver. This is proof that the Holy Spirit in us and the written word is enough for us to live the life God has called us for. It is sufficient to deliver you beyond the scope of the horoscope. If Daniel and Co. in the Old Testament did such exploits, outshine magicians and astrologers with the Holy Spirit, how much more today? It is only a backsliding people who want to combine the leading of the spirit with astrology. In another video, I saw the pastor asking, what is demonic about using the horoscope? Really? In other words, what he means is that if it works and doesn't cause harm to anyone, it is good to be embraced by all. Seriously? This is erroneous thinking. A thing ought not to be directly demonic before it is rejected by the people of God. It qualifies to be thrown into the gutters if it seeks to change the way God wants his children to live. If a practice also seeks to take the place of God in the lives of his people, in this case, in the leading of the people of God by the Spirit of God, we must throw it out. This is to turn the people away from looking to the divine spirit to stars. Nothing should sway us from listening to the divine spirit to focusing on stars and moons and what have you. Actually, astrology and magic is the wisdom and stronghold of the Babylonians and the Chaldeans as against the Spirit of God who leads the people of God. When you check the Old Testament, the Babylonians and the Chaldeans relied on magicians and astrology whilst the people of God relied on the Spirit of God. Look at what God says when he was bringing a prophecy concerning the destruction of these people in Isaiah 47 1 to 4 and 11 to 14. He says, Listen, verse 12 says, Stand now with thy enchantment and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, listen, the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Are you listening? Behold, they shall be as stable. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at nor fire to sit before it. This is the first reason to know astrology and stargazing does not belong to the people of God. In Deuteronomy, God warns the children of Israel 
not to fall for this, not to fall for astrology of any kind. In Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12, the Bible says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Already we have shown you that these are the practices of the Babylonians and their Chaldeans. The heathens were into these things. Verse 10, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that use divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Look at verse 11. Or a charmer, or a consorter with familiar spirit, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of this abomination, the Lord thy God doth to drive them out from before thee. Pay attention to these things. The second problem with introducing horoscope reading and Bible astrology is this. If we need to use the horoscope to have or lead the good life, then it means three things. Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the written word which is given to us is not enough. And since you don't need to have Jesus before practicing astrology, and there are many such people who practice it without having Jesus, then astrology is bigger than Jesus Christ. Because though we have Jesus, we still need to be complete by practicing these things, to have everything. But they don't need the Lord Jesus. It also means the Lord and the apostles were deceptive and cannot be fully trusted because they knew of all these things and never mentioned it anywhere in their epistles or in their lifetime. Listen, if the Spirit of God is not enough, is it reading the horoscope that will be enough? Is it palm reading as Pastor Obed is teaching that will be enough? What about consulting with witch doctors? Would that be enough? Are they not also um, created by God and also every power comes from God? So are they not also having power which comes from God indirectly? At what point then is it enough to stop seeking guidance from anywhere? The idea that the Holy Ghost is not enough is demonic. I'm telling you. It is a convenient step out of Christ to seek other things. Yet the Lord says we should be content with what things soever we have. Because he will never leave us nor forsake us. Be content with having the Holy Spirit. If his presence is not enough, then again I, I, I tell you. What will be enough for you? In the Old Testament, astrology and magic were always the main approaches of divination that challenged or contested the people of God who had the Spirit of God and wanted to live by the Spirit of God. The two have never been compatible. So how is it that suddenly it is being merged in Christendom today? Daniel contested astrologers in his days. When you read Daniel chapter 1 verse 20 and Daniel chapter 2 verse 27 to 28, the Bible says, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers show unto the king. Have you seen it? So he had competitors which were astrologers and magicians but there is a god in heaven that reveals secrets and make it known to the king nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these then he went on and brought an explanation from god no one should listen to any man who seeks to introduce them to anything outside of christ if christ is not enough for you nothing will ever be enough if Daniel did exploit with the Spirit of God over astrologers, why do you go back to these beggarly elements? The third problem with the so-called biblical astrology is that it leads people to look to the sun, S-U-N, which is a star and a creation, and not the sun, S-O-N, who is Jesus, the creator. Listen to me carefully. This is very important. In the last days, the problem will not be about the inerrancy of Christ and his word, but the sufficiency of the Lord. Is the Lord enough to go to what has been created for direction and guidance when Christianity is a call to a living relationship with God and a platform for fellowship? It's not just foolish, but a lack of faith in the Lord. Christianity is a call to a living relationship where God tabernacles in a person and guides him from within. 
The Lord said in John 14, 16 to 17, He says, And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, I love this, whom the world cannot receive, because it hear Him not, neither knoweth Him, but ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Having all this, is it not enough? The Greek word for comforter is very powerful when you bring it to the English. It means comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. Is it to say this is not enough? Are you saying all this is not enough? Number four. Whatever astrology, whether biblical or not, is not compatible with Christianity. It is all about identifying your elements, knowing your star, knowing your zodiac sign, etc. Christianity is not about yourself. It's not about us. It is about Christ and growing into Him. It is not about your star, but growing into Christ. Bible verses could be used as a cover to teach anything, but it doesn't mean it is the way of the Lord. It must be about Christ and His purpose for you and not nature. Listen to me. As I conclude on this, I would like you to know this. Turning from the Lord and the Spirit to the sun and stars and moon and what have you for guidance is putting faith in other things other than God and it is to be rejected outrightly because the Lord forbids it. The Lord alone must be the focus of our faith. Number two, listen, neither the Lord nor his apostles taught such things. Be content with the provisions of God for us in Christ. If the Holy Spirit is not enough, remember, think about this. Nothing can be enough. Look unto Jesus and forget all else. Let no man rob you of your heritage in Christ by leading you into these beggarly elements of this world. I am Apostle Gina. I believe you are blessed. Be edified by these words and do not succumb to high-sounding messages and philosophies that rob you of your inheritance in Christ. I will see you in the next video. Have a blessed time. God bless you.